So you got a blueprint given to you. The blueprint has a drilled hole on it or a hole on it. It's got a call out for the form or the, or the cylindricity of the hole to be pretty precise. What would be your best method? Are you okay just drilling this hole? Do you need to drill it and ream it? Do you need to drill it, bore it? Or should you do it on a CNC mill? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at these different methods and determine which one of these methods will give us the best result. Will it be just a drilled hole? Will it be a reamed hole? Will it be a bored hole? Or be a CNC mill? Now I have two ways I'm going to do the CNC milling here to see if they make a difference between the two different methods and see if we get different results using virtually the same program. Okay, so my name is Derek Hogan. I'm with North Georgia Technical College and that's what I've got for you today. Okay, there's something interesting happening with this one right here. If you look at the um, reamer itself, it's rotating correctly, but the camera frame rate is making it look like it's running backwards. Now, one thing right here that could have improved our results a little bit is we could have used a little bit of cutting oil here. In this situation, you know, the not having cutting oil was okay, but it would have probably helped out and get a little bit better results out of our reamed hole. It's a situation where we didn't have it at the machine and um, didn't feel like walking across the shop to get it and should have in that situation. I'm going to take a couple of spring passes with this one to uh, cut out any push off that we've got with this and also give myself a nice usable hole. You see how it cut a little bit of the way up? That's a push off from the cutter. Even this nice short relatively large diameter cutter like this right here has some push off that occurs during the cut. Now one thing you want to do when boring a hole is I like to make my sizing cut and my finishing cut be the same. So if I'm going to size it, I'm going to try to make sure I make the same number of passes to get my piece where it needs to be. And that looks pretty good. It's got a little line right there, but I think it'll be okay. I'm going to do one more spring pass just for kicks. We're going for roundness. We're not going for size here. I just want to see how round this compares to the other, to the other processes. Is this method going to be rounder than the range? It'll definitely be rounder than the drilled, we know that much. But we'll see how it goes. And it's cut through. So, I'll take this over to the CMM and see how it looks. I'm running the drill hole right now. This is just the drilled hole. It's going along collecting data points as it goes. Eight turns around the part in a helical path. Come over here and look. This is a 7 8 drilled hole. You see how it drilled 886. Now that's going to be, a, that's pretty common. A drill bit's going to drill naturally big. Uh, that's not unheard of right there. Now, one thing to note here is my form deviation here. My total deviation was 8 thousandths. 8.00816. So 
so that gives me a variation there of eight thousandths from the true form there. I've tested this using cylindricity and roundness. I'm getting similar results in there, so I decided to go with form for this. This is checking my drilled and reamed hole here. Same process as you saw before. Okay, now something interesting happened here. You can't see it over here, but I'm going to show you this right here. You see the bottom one, sensor did not carry out measurement of expected force. When that happens on this machine right here, which means is the hole is slightly out of the line. So it's what it's going to do is it continued on and did the measurement, has corrected for the center line. Now it's going to go back and do it again to get itself lined back up. Once this prints out, I'll show you the results. Okay, here is our, our results on the drilled and reamed hole. Our form is 0 0.00125 and our act hole size is 0 0.88, 0 0.877. It's a little bit oversized in this case right now. Um, could be a couple things, could be a little bit of a reamer misalignment. Um, my student who reamed it forgot to use cutting oil on it and that can have affect that a little bit also. So you got some options as to what could cause that there. Once again, you can see how it is the much better form than just a drilled hole. So, so far, it has really exceeded the capacity of what a, just a drilled hole would be. Okay, now I'm going to rerun our a sample here for the board hole here. Let me check in for form. So what I want to do is select down here on the run and go to clear existing results and it is going to go about running. Click start and it's going to go down. Right now it is going around. It's going to make eight passes around collecting data at different increments there. And getting data on the form of the hole here. I do check size, but the size is really just to show you the difference between a drilled and reamed hole and a just straight up drilled hole. So I'm not going to worry too much about the size here. Matter of fact, I didn't really size this per se. I cut this to make sure I had a cleaned up surface there for it to actually run. And once it gets done here, this next pass, it's going to have my data points and it's going to give me a number comes up, goes over, opens up, and I have a form tolerance here of 0 0.0016, which means this is 0 0.0016 of being a circle. Now you notice my diameter here is 0.915, like I said, I did not even size this one right here. Um, one of my students honestly drilled the hole and drilled a little bit off center, so getting it back on position wise, I had to go a little bit big with it. So I'm not surprised that it is considerably bigger than it's supposed to be on the diameter itself. Okay, I'm going to do the mill work on this on our uh, Mazak VC300A. Uh, it's a small machine, but it's a really, really well-built machine that does a really nice job on this right here. Now, I'm going to talk a couple things in the program here. I did this in Mazatrol, okay, so I used uh, carbon steel from material, that's what I'm using. Initial Z high is a 0.1. Um, then I put my WPC in, G54, MMS, which is my tool probe. It's going to come down and probe the Z. Then it's going to do the X step and the Y step to basically probe the outside of it. Now, here's where things get interesting, where I do a couple of little things differently with this. First, I'm going to pocket it out to rough it. Now I'm going to rough it out basically about 15 thousand smaller than it has to be. I'm going to come back and do a finishing pass to finish this up to size. So I'm going to do my roughing right here on it. Then I'm going to do a finishing pass. And I want you to notice something here. I'm doing it clockwise. And if I scroll down a little bit more here, I'm going to do another one counterclockwise. So both of these are going to be counterclockwise. 
The reason for counterclockwise in two finishing passes here is I want to try something on the second one of these I run. And I want it to be even. So for example, I'm going to cut this one to size. And then I'm going to do another finishing pass around it. See how round it is. Then I'm going to do another one, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a climb mill pass and a conventional mill pass on it and see which one of these two produces the, the most round hole. Now before I want to run this, there is one thing I want to do here. I want to go over and I want to pull up my full data right here. And if you look right here, this is page one of my full data. I have a half inch demo up here. It is um, labeled number A right here. Now, I'll show you a little bit more information on this right here. So we got um, the back over here. We go to, where is it at? Tool file. Right here. This gives us information about what these codes are. Okay, that first half inch in you see, number A, is a three flute, diminishing a quarter of flute width. The second one we see here is our four flute right here. It's the one that's in the machine. I've got both of these in the machine in different positions here. I'm going to use this right here, this number, letter B here, um, since it is the four flute for this right here. Okay, so I need to do something right here, and I want to probe this right here to make sure it is set up correctly. I'm going to go to MDI right here. And on this machine right here to probe it, you're going to type in G857B3. Now B1 does lengths, B2 does diameter, B3 does lengths and diameter. So this is going to probe both my lengths and diameter on this tool. Here. I'm then going to enter my diameter here. My diameter is 0.5. Okay. Let me enter here. So that's got that ready to go in there. I'm going to go over to my tool offset page. See, tool data page, actually. And I want you to note something here. This right here is on the second page here. It's tool number 16. It's currently in the spindle. Now, if I, hadn't had, if I didn't have this in the spindle, I would need to put it in the spindle. So there's ways to do this right here um, using uh, inside of the MDI. It gives me a button to do a tool change in there and I just enter the tool number you want to and then hit uh, cycle start it does it for you. So in this case right here we show a tool length of 4.36225 and a tool diameter of 0.50156. I did this just recently, but I'm going to do it again and see if we get any different values there. So I'm going to hit cycle start. Let me see. Turns my probe on. Goes down. Turns the spindle on to probe it while it's running. Probes the lens. Moves over. Probes the diameter on one side. Does the same thing on the other side. Now when it goes up here, we'll see if we can change these values here. Here are our new values here. And there's not a whole lot of difference in those out there. It's a very slight difference there. Once again, I just had done this really recently and not ran anything since then. So it's actually pretty close to being what it was beforehand.
Uh, it's not gonna work. Okay, this one right here is my first milled hole. This was done using a climb, two climb mill passes to finish up. Things to note with it, um, so far it has the best surface finish of any of the holes that we've done so far. Let's see how that correlates to the um, actual form of the hole. Okay, surprisingly to me, um, this one right here actually is eight ten thousandths of an inch. Also, you notice one thing about it, it did cut it a little bit undersized, even though we did size the um, cutter right before we ran this, it still is a slight bit undersized, 8.8737 with that. So it's slightly undersized here, but I'm really surprised that it's eight ten thousandths of an inch there. It's a much better whole form than I expected. Okay, I'm going to make one change to my program here. So I'm going to scroll down until I get to my second line, which is my contour pass here. And I'm going to change my rotation direction here to be clockwise cut instead of counterclockwise cut. And that's going to do a climb mill pass and then a conventional mill pass. I'm curious to see if there's any difference between the two. Um, but we'll run this right here and test this one and see how it runs. So now it's doing its climb mill finishing pass. And as you're going to see here, it's going to do a conventional mill finishing pass. Let's see how this turns out different. By the way, to keep things kind of fair on this one, I did retouch off on this one also just to see um, if there's any change with the last one and see, just make everything even on this. Okay, so now this is my milled, CNC milled one. So it's using a conventional and then a kind of climb mill and then a conventional mill finishing pass. Same to note on it. I think it actually has the best finish of any of these. If you compare it to the other one right here, the other one's good, but this one's a little bit better of a surface finish. Um, and they're even getting a better surface finish than the board one did. The board one's finish is not bad, but it's not as good as these milled ones are here. Let's see if that correlates to a better uh, form on the hole. And see if there's any difference between 
the two climb mill passes and the conventional and the climb mill passes. Arm is 0 0.0075, so it is a slight bit better than the just two climb mill passes. Now, here's what's surprising to me on this. I had always heard that a CNC mill would not produce as round a hole as a boring head would. This is we're getting different results here. This is kind of a surprise to me that we're ending up getting results that basically are showing the opposite to be true. Now, the why on that? Well, it's tough to say. we got a pretty good mill back here, so it's not exactly the biggest mill in the world, but it is a pretty solid little mill. So, I'm going to try running this on a different machine and see if I get different results. Now, you don't always have you know access to a less than two-year-old machining center that basically has been used in an educational environment. Like we do but so we kind of wanted to pick one of our older machines to run this on we have a um, older machine it's a basically a 2000 model it's been in, edu in an educational environment its entire life so it's not been ran huge production on but it's also not exactly been babied and taken care of students have a tendency to not always do the right thing when it goes to making a cut yeah, sometimes yeah, they okay. cut um, at the wrong feed rates, sometimes they cut at the wrong speeds, sometimes they plow stuff into stuff, you know how it is with students. Well, so I wanted to see how this would turn out. So I'm doing the same thing on it, both a climb and conventional pass, to see if they turn out, um, how the results compare to what we got with the, um, made the much newer machine. One other thing on this right here to make it as even as possible, I duplicated the speeds and the feeds the and the there. amount of material that's being removed per pass. Now you can see it's doing the climb mill finishing pass and here it's about to do the conventional mill finishing the pass. pass Curious to see how a 21 year old machine stacks up. Actually, this time, Shannon, it got one thousand. Okay, after thinking about it a little bit, I got to thinking that the what I could be seeing could be some perpendicularity issues there. So what I did is I'm still checking the form using a helical pass. I'm going down and doing a single rotary pass on the dead center of the part to give us an area where we can compare that. And also to check the perpendicularity, I'm going around and checking the top surface of the workpiece, trying to avoid the stamping, to make sure the stamping doesn't affect it. We're trying to see how perpendicular the piece is. Now I'm finding, I'm getting some really um, nice numbers on roundness on the different operations here. 
In this case right here, I got some pretty good numbers on perpendicularity also. So this right here was the one that was done on the CNC mill using both a climb and conventional pass. My form tolerance is off by 7 tenths, um, almost 8 tenths. My roundness is off by um, 600 thousandths of an inch there in this. And the perpendicularity is off by 8 tenths on this. Not bad for a mill part, especially considering I didn't deck the top of it or do anything besides just put it in the machine and run it. Checking my last one of these right here. This is the one that was done on the 2000 model machine. So again, it's been used in an educational environment for the past 21 years. So let's see how it compares to the, you know, the less than two year old machine that I have behind me. Going about finishing up the pass now. Checking the top surface. And let's see how this one looks. Pulls up the data here. And there has been some separation here. Now we still have good form here. But you can see the roundness of it. It's not bad at 4 tenths. But it's not as round as it was before. Perpendicularity actually on this right here is actually really good too at 0 .003, 0 0.003, so it's 3 tenths for that also. So overall not bad for a 2000 model machine. Now granted this was done using you know, the best case scenario where I had the two finishing passes one both direction there. Um, so that gave us the best case results we could get. Okay now here's a look at the data for this right here. So what I have here is the sheets where I ran them. This right here is the drilled one right here. So it's just a drilled one. Now this is the first run here. This is just focusing on form and diameter here. So you can see the, the form was off by 8,000. The diameter is off by this. Now if I compare that to my um, ringed one, the accuracy of the form improved considerably here. And also the accuracy of the hole itself. Now this is the one that confused me here. So this is the one that made me go back and take a look at how I was doing this right here. I'm just showing you this data here. Then I'm going to show you the data that I just, the ones I just ran, has some slightly different values here. This form being off this much right here and being technically worse than the, the reamed one was a surprise to me. So this is why I made some changes here. And this is just initially the raw data here. Once again, this is the one that was, that was climb milled and climb milled two passes to do your finishing. This one right here is the one that is climb milled and then conventional milled. And this was the one right here that also kind of surprised me that it's not too bad for considering its age was uh, the um, older Haas machine that we have that has from basically the old 2000. This is the old BF0 from, uh, not from basically 2000, year 2000. So that's the data of that. Well, I'm going to take it, show you the data that I took when I got to put in a circle pass down in the middle of it and just focused on roundness and also take a look at the, per the parallel is the, sorry, the perpendicularity of the hole to see how it played. Okay, this right here is where I added a single round, a single circle pass down in the center of the piece just to check roundness. Now this is my drilled hole. You see my roundness has improved. Okay, my perpendicularity was not the greatest on this also. Now here with the rain hole, my roundness has improved e even more so than it was before. My perpendicularity is not great. Once again, this is drilled on a, just a drill press, not on a milling machine or anything like that. Now this next one here is where you see some big changes taking place. This is my board one here. If you notice my roundness is only one ten thousandths out there. That's more what I expected out of the board hole there. And once again, my um, perpendicularity is about six tenths off there. So this right here, the head wasn't quite perfectly aligned. It's not horrible perpendicularity, but once again, that's, you know, six tenths over a half inch of uh, lens is a pretty decent amount of perpendicularity. Now, my milled ones here, this is the climb and climb milled one here. The climb and climb milled one, you can see how my um, roundness 
is um, six hundred thousandths of an inch there. A perpendicularity was okay on this one, but not great. Um, I'd like to go back and rerun this one right here and see if I can figure out why that one's off. Now here's the climate conventional. If you notice something here, I'm going to go back and forth here. There was no change on this machine between doing it. And it also is more round than the board hole was right here. So it's actually a more round hole than the board hole was there. Now, if I go to look at my one on the uh, not well, the 2000 year machine, you can see the roundness on it's not bad, but it's not as good as the the um, board one is. But it's and it's also not as good as the you know the less than two year old machine that we have. So there's you know been some surprising results with this right here, drilled. It's going to be a worse, of course. Reamed is going to be next. It's going to be a lot better than drilled. Then you've got your, you know, it kind of gets a little bit muddled depending upon what you're doing. How new is your machine? What conditions your machine is? How good your cutting tool is? How good your setup is? Uh, all those factors can come into play with this right here. Now, if I had this pushing off a little bit, I might get different results. So I was trying to use a pretty new cutter in both situations. And also, like I said, in the case of the Mazak, I did touch off the tool both times and reset the diameter both times to give myself a better result there. So overall, some things to think about when you got to make a hole. You know, depending upon how round and what the form of the hole and what perpendicularity and what other uh, features you have involved there, you may need to consider different methods to making a hole besides just the milling machine. Now. I will say this much right now. I was very impressed with how round and how good the data numbers were with the uh, CNC milled one on the newer machine. Those were pretty um, impressive numbers to see. Well, my name is Derek Hogan. I am with North Georgia Technical College on the Clarksville campus in the Precision Machining slash CNC Technology Program. Um, we also have a torn die program, by the way. I may do a video in the future that shows you a little bit of some things with, in regards to a torn die that we do. Now, um, if you have any questions or anything like that or anything, any ideals, uh, feel free to put them in the comments. And also don't forget to like and share.